Hey there, Postal here. So this week we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I'm going to be posting a video on three different planes that I get requested quite a bit uh, on the same line. So today we're going to be taking out the B, the P-47B, Tier 6 American Multi-Role Fighter. Let's take a look. So we are taking out our P-47 today. Um, let's see what we can do. So we've had some really good games, but nothing that... So, how do I wear this? The P-47 is an, can be a good support aircraft. Um, it's a multiplier. So if your team's doing well, um, you can reinforce that and... Uh, really, it, it's it's no, it's a snowball effect, right? Um, actually, you know what? Let's just go to the closest sector and we'll go from there. I'll send everybody else over there. We're top tier. Let's just capture sectors. I want to take advantage of uh, my bombs and rockets. Uh, this is not a carry plane, though, unfortunately. So what that means is if your team's just doing very poorly, um, it's gonna you're gonna struggle with for personal points. Or you typically, um, you know, you can't necessarily kill planes quickly. You've got eight machine guns, so a lot of people might look at that and be like, "Wow, that's pretty good." And it can be. Problem is, it does take a little while for those guns to actually do the damage you want them to do. My recommendation always is in this plane to go for the less maneuverable targets. And that will allow you to keep the guns on target for longer. And it will allow you to be more effective with those guns. The big thing is, though, you really do want to try to take advantage of your bombs and rockets. If you're utilizing your bombs and rockets, then you're getting the full effect of this particular plane. Um, so let's go ahead and try to do that over here. I'm actually going to drop both bombs here on the center just to make sure we get it. And we're going to focus on this dude right here. Just because he was on low health. Awesome. Let's go ahead and drop some rockets here. Did I get all of it? No, I left just a little piece of it. So let's try to get this boomerang if we can. Only because he's not paying attention to us. I think I can stick with him. Which I can. Unfortunately, he's now another boomerang. Let's hit the old F7 here. I'm actually going to try to hit this ground target here. Oh, did I miss all my stuff? There we go. So close. Let's keep on moving here trying to knock out some of these. Oh, this is a hard target, so I'm definitely not going to be able to knock that out. We've still got planes on our booties. Let's see if I can't knock out this boomerang, though. Knock out my engine, unfortunately, which is like God, it's like the worst thing in this plane. Your, your survivability really depends on your ability to keep speed. And so if you're not keeping speed, you're typically having a lot of issues Luckily, we flipped this sector before I died, and so we were able to, um, you know, not die. Let's go ahead and get our speed back up here. And I've got 22 seconds worth of boost on this plane, so take advantage of that. I try to always keep about 10 seconds in reserve, so that way if I need to boost away from a heavy fighter, I can, or stick with a heavy fighter, I can do that. If I need to boost away from a light fighter, I can do that. Um... It's definitely something that you want to take advantage of. Utilize your strengths, right? Don't try to force your plane to be something that it's not. All you're going to do is frustrate yourself. So right there, I bet we're speaking of frustrating ourselves. I bet uh, that guy was probably... I'm just going to probably knock down all these rockets here. Oh, seriously, I missed that little tent. Oh my goodness, I suck. How am I allowed to freaking play this game? Um, guns should get the tent though. 
Hello? Oh, so terrible! Oh man, I suck. Showing off that poor maneuverability, right? So the plane can, especially with eight machine guns, can do really well versus the ground. Uh, but not when you actually thrust yourself into the ground. So, yeah, long darts for everybody, right? So I'm going to spawn up here, defend this a little bit. Uh, yes, because these targets up here are going to be the less maneuverable ones. So if I can defend against anybody, it's going to be targets like this. Alright, so we've got a P-47 up top here. Is he coming right at us? He is. Couldn't tell at first. So we're going to use uh, what I call a gravity-assisted uh, turn right there to actually get some reasonable maneuverability. Let's get our speed back up. We've got the engine cooling still ready to go. P-47, clearly fast enough plane. I'm finding it really, really funny today that because I'm just doing well in the P-47, I'm getting really easy wins. This one seems like it might be another really easy win. Uh, we keep getting air supremacy. Uh, this plane, again, I think the biggest issue people have with this plane is that they try to do stuff that is just not a lot built to do in this game. They know how good the plane is in real life. I'm sorry, uh, World of Warplanes is not real life, right? So, um, you know, don't force this plane to be anything that it can't be. Yeah, I'm going to high altitude. I say this as I'm going to way too high altitude. But I'm not going out of the freaking, like, into the red, right? And the bomber here isn't going to be able to outspeed me or outmaneuver me or out... Could have out altitude me, but I guess he didn't want to. Um, and so I feel comfortable with doing that kind of situation. Let's get, get down now a little bit more. Um, and keep our airspeed up. Again, that's what's going to be saving us is our airspeed. So let's utilize our airspeed. Kind of up and over here. Toss it back down. There we go. And just another freaking easy win. To be honest, I'm, what is this, fifth game, sixth game? And they've all been very similar to this. It's putting the XP, the XP, putting the P-47 in a position to be effective and keeping it out of trouble. I think that's the biggest key to this plane. Yeah, anybody can know how to bomb properly and rocket properly and crash into the ground properly. And this wasn't even like my best game. But what I did do though is do everything I could to keep myself out of trouble. Pay attention to the map, utilize F3 and F7 quite a bit and go from there. Let's head back. All right, so again, he even screwed up and didn't do anything like over the top crazy. Nine kills, okay ground damage. Um, but the key to being successful with this plane is keep yourself out of trouble. And if you can keep yourself out of trouble, um, then this is a great support plane. You've got two very good bombs. You've got mediocre, but you've got them rockets, right? Um, and we're going to talk about everything in detail really quick here, and we're going to continue on this particular line for this week. Next, we'll look at the P-47N, and then we'll finally look at the XP-72. These three planes specifically are not very well loved. Um, they're not easy planes to play. They're certainly not my go-to for tier six, seven, and eight multi-role fighters, even for multi-role fighters that, um, have flexibility to do a lot of ground damage. These are not the ones I go with. So, uh, but they can be effective. And I think like anything in this game, the more you play them, the more you'll understand the nuances, the more you'll be able to keep yourself and put yourself into winning situations. And maybe, maybe, maybe this could be a plane uh, that I start to play more often. So what are we looking at here? Um, fully upgraded, you've got two 500 pound bombs, which at tier six is actually really quite good. You have six air-to-ground rockets. These are not HVAR rockets. They're only doing 7, 7,750 damage each. So multiplying that by um, six, and you're doing, what, um, 4,500 damage to the ground with your rockets. They reload pretty quickly in one minute. Oh, a minute and a half, excuse me. Bombs take two minutes to reload. 
Uh, your guns. So something that you do want to take advantage of is you have eight of these machine guns. These are the same machine guns that are on your P-51A, right? They're the same machine guns that you get stock on the P-51D. Um, I think they're the same stock ones that you get with the F4U1. I would prefer 20 millimeter cannons, but you don't get 20 millimeter cannons, so you get what you get. But there's eight of them, and so that does make a pretty good difference as far as your ability to do damage. Um, you know, having eight of them here means that you're doing what 360 damage, um, and at tier six, that's not the worst by any means. You also set a lot of fires, and because of the spread, like if you're shooting something that's low on hit points you're definitely going to do the damage. You're basically a swarm of bees at the plane in front of you. And so that's something that, I, that you should be paying attention to. You need to be paying attention to the map for your own defense to see what's inbound. Um, you know, P-38s, uh, ME-410s, things of that nature. Um, you need to be paying attention so that you can take evasive maneuvers. But if you're also paying attention for your own defense, which needs to be your first priority, um, you can also be paying attention to low hit point planes. Planes that you might not necessarily go after typically, like Spitfires and things of that nature, but you see they're on low health, you're going to probably get them knocked out if you can get your guns on target. That's the key. So utilize um, you know, utilize your, your map awareness to take advantage of those situations. Uh, last but not least, you've got a good engine here. You've got really good airspeed, especially for this um, plane type, a multi-roll, especially for this tier. Take advantage of that. Yet yeah, you're not going to outspeed ME-410s. But what you are going to do is you're going to have plenty of boost. I've got 22 seconds worth of boost here. That can be very surprising to your enemy. A lot of the other multi-rolls of this tier just don't have that kind of flexibility. And so, like I said, I typically try to keep my boost around 10 seconds, so that way if I desperately need it, I've always got it. That still means that you're using 12 seconds worth of boost. That's significant. And so you want to soak that up and utilize that to your advantage. You know, a lot of the feedback that I get on the P47s are, you know, that they're just not as good as Tornado or as good as uh, F4U or as good as, you know, some of the other planes that are out there. That if you play this like you would play a tornado, yeah, you're exactly right. It's going to struggle um, completely. But guess what? If you play a tornado like this, you're going to struggle with a tornado. The thing of it is, is you want to utilize your airspeed, use your altitude performance. Um, at this tier especially, a lot of people are playing at the lower altitudes. And so if you're playing at the highest threshold um, of your optimum altitude, so basically whatever your optimum altitude is, is your white numbers for altitude. If you're playing at almost yellow altitude numbers, that's a really good spot to play this at because it allows you to dive down on enemies and take advantage of them not paying attention to you. And again, you're gonna knock out a lot of things like Spitfires and Zeros that are on low health or even half health because you're attacking them before they even realize that you're actually doing the attacking. Again, mid tiers, not everybody's paying attention to the map. That can be overpowered. Take advantage of it. So I do not have this plane specialized yet, working on it, but as far as equipment is concerned, I recommend leaning into that speed, right? So on the equipment slot for cockpit, the sight is really your only option. Um, you wanna get those guns on target quicker. And if you can improve it like I have, I've actually gotten the uh, chance of causing a fire boosted by 10%. That's really important for the 50 caliber machine gun type planes, planes that rely on that. You're actually probably gonna do a decent chunk of your damage is going to be fires that you've set on those planes. Um, setting fires is incredibly helpful for doing damage, even more so with, with guns like this. For the engine, I've actually put the uprated engine on here. Helps your acceleration without boost. Helps your overall cruise speed. The flip side of that is, because you've got so much more boost than most other planes, I mean, I think the FW-190 has got 20 seconds worth of boost. The Tornado and F4U-1 um, both have 15 seconds worth of boost. The Yak-9 has like 10 seconds maybe or 12. So you've got significantly more. What you could conceivably do is go with Combined Injection Boost System, which lowers your boost amount of seconds but um, increases the boost efficiency. So 
your overall speed is uh, like when you're not boosting your speed might be a little less but when you are boosting it's going to be a little more um it's six and one half dozen of another based on your play style i've gone with uprated engines so that my way my acceleration without boost and my overall cruise speed is higher i find that a little bit more effective so that way if i'm not boosting i know that my speed's still a little bit faster than uh, what it normally would be um, and so that's why I've gone with uprated engine. As far as consumables are concerned, I've gone with first aid package and with engine cooling. This plane doesn't catch on fire very often. It's typically one of those situations where if an enemy is focusing you down, you're just kind of dead because you can't outmaneuver them. And if you've left, yeah, left yourself without any kind of boost, then you're dead. That, that's basically what I mean. So I always keep my boost so I can get away from the fighters like Spitfires and things of that nature that I need to. Um, or so I can stick with heavy fighters or get up to a bomber level. Um, if I've always got that boost ready to go, then I can succeed in that regard. Um, but anyway, so I, this plane doesn't catch on fire. I'd rather be able to put my pilot in, get the guns on target a little bit quicker if I need to. Um, last but not least, I've got the engine cooling on here, and the reason being is because, again, it's just all about speed. The engine doesn't get knocked out very often, although it did get knocked out in this game. It's the first time it's gotten knocked out in the five or six games that I've played this morning. Engine cooling is much more effective, much more useful, I should say, because I use this you know, two, three, four times in a battle, five, whatever, whereas engine restart I would use once every five battles, <clears throat> kind of opposites. I've put universal ammo on here. I've, it's 6,000 credits. It's not the end of the world for me. Um, and I find that it, it typically is helpful. And so, yeah, that's my overall equipment setup. Um, I do have a special pilot for my P-47B, which certainly helps. I can't take, I can't, you know, can't say the P-47B um, would be uh, just as good with any other pilot. I've got Mary Loveheart. I was able to win her uh, earlier this year when they had those... Um, uh, missions incredibly helpful for your bombs and your rockets uh, valkyrie's wrath here at uh, doubles the damage um, from your bombs and rockets when you're attacking at a 45 degree angle so basically if you're you know dive bombing on the ground targets um, i've been able to take over mining facilities or, or at least be very impactful on mining facilities thanks to this particular um, bonus um, and the other one that you get here is Eagle's Wings, which increases your thrust and your boost duration by 10%. Oh, I didn't realize that. So my boost duration is 22 seconds on here. That's actually because of Mary. I didn't realize that. So it would normally be 20 seconds, which is still really good. It's up there with the FW190. Again, it's still more uh, significant than the Tornado and the F4U1. Everything I've said about the boost, though, still applies. Um, and so it, nothing really changes with that two seconds difference. As far as um, how I would recommend somebody that doesn't have Mary for their pilot, your setup would be, um, I would still lean heavily, although your special pilot skill here, I wouldn't, you know, you're not going to go for anything down here right off the bat. You're going to want to get demolition experts so that your bombs and rockets do 10% do more damage and have a bigger blast radius. Um, and then you're almost certainly going to want to go in on... Uh, your engine guru, which this would normally be engine guru one, and this would be engine guru two. Again, you want to lean in on that speed. If you've got the plane specialized, you might want to go with aerodynamics expert. Uh, that will allow for your um, aerodynamics expert does 40% boost to your maneuverability and speed equipment. Right off the bat, you've only got one um, equipment that can help speed and maneuverability. So 40% boost to that isn't really going to be worth the two points. Your two points are going to be better used for your engine guru. However, once you have the plane specialized, and we'll go back to the equipment in just a second here. Once you have the plane specialized, you've got these additional equipment slots opened. You're going to um, actually find some usage for aerodynamics experts. So that's the difference. Specialized plane, just go with engine guru. I mean, excuse me, non-specialized plane, go with engine gurus. Once you've specialized it, aerodynamics expert could be a better option for you. Um, beyond that, like Marksman 1 and Marksman 2 isn't really going to be overly helpful with this plane right out of the gate. Um, 
you know your your machine guns you obviously you're using them but you've got so many and they're putting such a spread that marksman one isn't necessarily going to be incredibly helpful at this point you might want to add marksman one and marksman two once you get this pilot built up to above a 10 point pilot but early on especially the first six points or so you're going to want to lean in on demolition expert the engine gurus and possibly aerodynamics expert once you specialize the plane on the airframe i'm almost certainly going to be putting polished skin again to just really lean in on that airspeed see what i can do i might experiment with something like a lightweight wing frame or something along those lines just to put a sprinkle of maneuverability we'll kind of see um and as far as the consumable is you can kind of flip a coin typically i would recommend having um your uh what is it called i can't even remember right now where where your wing and tail get knocked out you can put it back in i forget what it is i'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments below that would probably be your best bet but i could also see situations where a pneumatic control assist could come in handy to just like barely save you in situations but that seems more like one-off type situations um, being able to repair your wings and tail is probably something that's going to be more helpful on a game to game basis once your outboard weapons are available you've got a couple different options you can lean in on the airspeed again and just make this a complete speed build type situation with your outboard weapons that will impact the reload speed of your bombs and rockets that um you know might not necessarily be worth it especially since the bombs and rockets do take a minute and a half and two minutes respectively to reload um, you might go ahead and put on here the ability to reload quicker that'll impact your overall speed um, so this this outboard weapon slot i'll actually have to do some experimentation with to see um you know what is going to be the best bet when it comes to the impact maybe having my um accuracy of my bombs and or rockets um, you know that's going to be an equipment slot option as well here so there's a lot of flexibility with this particular plane in regards to the outboard weapon equipment we'll just have to see once i specialize it i will almost certainly um, go ahead and put improved fragmentation here on the consumables once i can that gives an additional 10 percent damage and radius blast buff to your bombs and rockets totally worth it if you are using your bombs and rockets to be able to do more damage and get bigger blast radius um, with this particular plane so looking forward to specializing it specifically for that and my airframe equipment slot outboard weapons and consumable for the airframe i'm still kind of iffy on what i'm going to do with that but yeah now this plane can still be incredibly effective without mary yes i've got mary here thank you mary for for your increased gr ground damage uh but it's at tier six so the biggest thing that you need to do with the p47b is be paying attention to what's going on around you if you are not you're going to get spitfires and zeros and yaks and all that kind of crap uh tearing you up every single battle you're going to get P-38Js and ME-410s tearing you up every battle. You really need to play this plane like you would a ground attack vehicle. And what I mean by that is anybody that plays uh, ground attackers, Soviet, German, it doesn't matter. The, the really effective ones are paying attention to what's going on with the map. They know what sector you're going to to attack next. Even if it's not a red sector right now, it might be red sector or probably will be red sector soon. So you know to go to that one, right? They're paying attention to the enemy aircraft. Um, what heavy fighters, what fighters are around them? What do I need to avoid? What sector do I need to be effective at? Things of that nature. And so if you've got a ground attacker mentality with your P-47, you'll be a lot more effective with your plane because you'll be alive longer if you're not crashing into the ground. So if you're doing that kind of thing, if you're paying attention to what's going on, paying attention to which sectors are, are in need of being flipped, paying attention to what enemies are inbound or outbound you're you're just going to be more effective and you're going to have a better impact on the game this plane can be a very good support aircraft it's not going to necessarily lead the way but what it's going to be is a force multiplier one way or another you're going to be a force multiplier whether it's by your guns or by your bombs and rockets and so there's some there's there's a nicety about that again this is not my go-to tier six multi-role fighter but the more I'm playing it, the more I'm finding it to be an effective tier six multi-role fighter. And that's all you can really ask in this game. 
Anyway, I hope this was helpful. A lot of rambling, and I apologize. Later this week, we're going to take a look at the P-47N and see what the differences between this plane and that plane are and see if the same tactics roll over at Tier 7. I hope this was helpful. If you've got any more questions or comments, please put them down in the uh, comments down below. Uh, feel free to hop in my Discord. Uh, we'll, we continue to have discussions there as well. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.